So this is going to be voiceover of my most recent two fights, uh, starting out 2019. And doing a voiceover on my fights is something that my readers have let me know they really enjoy, so I'm trying to do more of it. Um, these are an interesting pair of fights uh, to start out the year. The first one is against Tanantional Kyosum Rit, who is one of the most decorated female Thai fighters. Um, she's been WPMF champion for probably six or seven years, and um, I had beat her in the end of September 2018, which was the last fight we'd had together, and then this fight against her uh, is after she had gone and won her WPMF title at, I think, 51 kilos in Japan. So she lost to me, went and won a world title, and then came back to um, basically avenge her loss to me uh, at the beginning of January. So we knew that she was going to be coming at me pretty hard. Um, she's an incredibly good fighter, and she is significantly bigger than me. So she's a very big challenge for me anytime I fight her. Um, but I think that I get better by facing her. I think this was our eighth fight together. Um, and she faces or she poses a lot of challenges for me um, for multiple reasons. Uh, her skill set as well as her size uh, is always very difficult for me. And when she decides to really put it on me, uh, it can be a huge challenge. So I usually don't like to talk about the result of fights going into them, but um, in this first fight against Tanan Chinook, um, it was an incredibly hard fight for me uh, mentally. So uh, I'll be talking about that as we go through it, and then the fight after that um, is kind of showing differences in uh, range and how uh, range can make a difference in how fights go. And just as a little bit of background, one of the additional difficulties in going into this fight against Tanan Chinook, uh was that I was really, really struggling at my gym um, at the time that this fight took place. So I was having a really hard time mentally in my home, basically, um, and kind of we have a lot of rocks in the road and ups and downs as a... Uh, professional career Muay Thai fighter because it's all that you do and so everything that is you uh, has ups and downs and that goes into your fighting as well. This is Taipei Stadium in Chiang Mai. And I have in my corner for this fight um, Karhat, Sor Supawan, who is my absolute hero, and I've been working with him for a couple of years. That's him putting my Mong Khan on. And then down there below is Pinoy, who often helps me at Tape. Um, Kevin's adjusting the live stream and his camera. <laughs> he has to juggle two things at once, so it can be pretty difficult. I was a little worried about this referee. You can see him in the corner. I have him fairly often, but he breaks the clinch a lot. So um, the fight before this one that I'd had in December, I was fighting against Nong Benz, and he was my referee, and he was breaking the clinch really fast. So my, my most recent fight with him was a loss, uh, and it was not only because of breaking in the clinch at all. There were a lot of things with that fight that needed to be amended. But as a clinch fighter, when I know that I uh, have a referee in the ring who's not going to let me clinch, I kind of have to be aware of that going in. Here's Tanan You can see how big her legs are. She's very strong uh, down below. But she is a uh, femur style fighter. Her technique is beautiful. She looks like a poster at every second. Like any photo of her in a fight looks so good. Um, and I'm the opposite of that. <laughs> so we make for interesting fights. Of our eight fights, I've beat her twice. So um, the one before this, I beat her. And um, I had beat her probably a year and a half or two years before at another stadium. Um, it's embarrassing to lose to me because uh, I'm so much smaller. Like if I lost to someone who was 36 kilos, I'd be pretty embarrassed about it. 
Kanan Chinook's got a slick outfit. She um she fights on big shows sometimes. The Kusumrit gym is a very famous one. It's a very big name. Um, she's from Lampang. She's a northern fighter. Um, but she is sponsored by or associated with the Kusumrit gym, so she fights with their name even though she's not at that gym. Um, often, maybe she goes there before she fights in Bangkok sometimes, but she fights on pretty big shows uh, for female fighters, uh, like in Ayutthaya or Bangkok, and so she has these um, very nice fight shorts and tops that make her look very uh, professional when she comes in for these fights. Um, the part of the reason I was really struggling mentally and emotionally, I guess, uh, coming into this fight was that I'd lost my last one, um, which was in late December at the end of a very difficult month for me. December was when I had my uh, all-female Moy Cow Summit hosted at Petron Rung, where we had legends and the top Thai female fighters come and work with women from around the world who were coming to learn the Muay Cao and Flinch style. It was unbelievable. It was a really great experience, but it was really hard for me. Um, I'm a very introverted person and it required me to be not that <laughs> for a long time. Um, and then I also got very sick right at the end, um, and so the physical recovery was difficult. So I was kind of coming off of a really tough month of December. Um, and then for whatever reason, I found myself kind of in a pit in my own development, in my own training, and kind of my place in the gym uh, was causing me a lot of personal strife. Um, and I think that I came into this fight with some serious mental baggage. So this is often how our fights start out between me and Tananchanok. Um, she likes to start out a little bit slow. She was coming at me a little bit harder than she normally would. Um, but I also have this tendency to mirror my opponents, and so I kind of let her have the first one or two rounds off a little bit, which does not bode well for my style. I really need to tire my opponents out early. It's kind of an investment. That leg kick is kind of like bad blood between me and Tananchino. <laughs> She's bashed my legs uh, in previous fights, and so I was wary of her tree trunk legs kicking my legs, um, but I was going after her legs as a little bit of a, I don't know, fuck you reminder or something. And it actually had a good effect. Um, it's one of those things that like something works early and then you just stop doing it for no reason. But when I talked earlier in the intro about how these fights have a lot to do with range, I'm at Tanan Chinook's range right now. She likes to kick, she's femur. Um, this is not my range. Like she can tag me as much as she wants and I'm basically stopping at that range. So simply by standing where I'm standing, she's currently winning this fight. And I'm getting tagged while moving back, which isn't great. I keep catching her kicks, but then not really having an answer on top of it. And Tanan Chinook is awesome at keeping her balance when she's caught and punching off of it. So if you catch someone's kick, not only did that kick score, but if you can't really do anything off of it, it's like the, the catch works against you. So you have to be a little cautious when you get in the habit of catching kicks that you really want your answer to catching the kicks to be dominant in some way. Um, and it's hard to do that against Tanan Chinook because of her balance and her ability to uh, punch and kick off of a, or punch off of a cock kick. Have to clinch her. I'm already in a don't bad mood. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see it, but my attitude coming to the corner, I'm just, already pissed at myself just forward, for how I'm backwards. fighting. Just go um, I think that I feel intimidated by her, uh, which is partially her size, but because she likes to not engage a great deal. She's if I am afraid of her and I won't close in, I let it be her range all the time. She's coming to you. Kevin is telling me I don't have to get in, that she's coming to me because Tanachinok is moving forward. Um, but she was actually backing me up because I was afraid of her. So instead of allowing her to close that distance, which would then be my range, I'm backing out, which keeps 
the range, her range the whole time. Like I'm doing the work for her rather than having her coming in being doing the work for me. So the referee is pointing to someone in the audience who has their flash on. Uh, they're filming with their flash on, and so he's trying to point them out to turn off their flash. If you ever come to Tape, no flash photography. It's uh, not good for the fighters, so you can take pictures, just turn your flash off. Probably true at any stadium. So here I'm trying to close the distance a little bit more. You can see I've got a little bit more step, but I'm like rocking. There I'm trying to get my gallop going a little bit, but I'm not actually closing the distance. <laughs> so I've, I've got the right idea, but my body's not actually doing what I think I should be doing. This range is not my range. Her push off there is working because of the guard I'm using. I'm kind of using this max guard where I keep um, my arms in the 11 position, which you can just push on like a handle. Whereas what she's doing with her arms where they're long, if I did a long guard, she could not push me the way that she is. You can hear Karahat yelling at me. He's telling me to teep, which is actually a really good game plan. Um, I think the first time I beat her, I was teeping a lot. So he wants me to teep first, like as a way to close the distance and off balance the opponent and then you can close in. See how I'm getting stuck? Uh, when I catch her kick, I'm getting completely stuck because I don't have the next idea. So right there, uh, that kind of like right hook that she threw, that went right on my ear hole and perforated my eardrum just by the air going in. <laughs> so I'm a little bit like hearing a ringing sound now. Um, it doesn't make you dizzy, but it, it definitely feels a little bit like being rung when your eardrum breaks. Um, and it's making me stay away from her even more than I was already. Look how nice she looks when she throws everything. See, I was going towards her and I just stopped. When she comes forward and decides to stop, I make it look like I'm completely afraid of her. Whereas when I come forward and I stop, it still looks like I'm afraid of her. So there's an element of performance that goes into the exact same techniques or the exact same her. movements, but they're interpreted differently by the way backwards. you look, like who's being affected. I know, you're afraid, um, but Tanan Chinook is great at that game. And I, just as the smaller forward. fighter all the time, um, the I have a greater onus on myself to look unafraid because it's assumed that I'm afraid because I'm so much smaller. So I am afraid uh, in this fight and it's showing. So I actually need to perform the opposite of that in order to make her size be interpreted differently from how it's in reality. Karhat's telling me to teep her stomach first. I have a hard time uh, in the corner understanding what Karahat wants me to do. It's kind of weird because when he's training me, I completely understand everything that he's telling me to do. He's very physical. Okay he's actually afraid, not very baby. verbal when he's teaching me. But when we're in the corner, it's all verbal. Like and so I have a much harder time understanding what it is he's asking me to do, um, which kind of sucks because <laughs> I really want to do what he's telling me to do. And it's probably very good advice all the time, but I, I struggle with understanding it. We're now getting into the um, scoring rounds. She's definitely taken the first two, but it doesn't matter so much yet at this point. Um, but I have to change the narrative in this round, um, especially having been afraid of her the first two rounds. And if you saw her dad uh, in the corner before he got out, he was telling her to elbow me, um, which is mostly the game plan of uh, the women I fight in the North. They all know that I uh, can be cut. So I'm, I'm not blocking, uh, which would allow me to keep coming forward. That block should have allowed me to come forward, but I stepped back off of it. So it's just these tiny differences. Like the block already happened, but if you fall backwards off of it, it looks very different. Here I'm trying to <laughs> lift her and uh, do something off of that cock kick, but 
She knows how to deal with that. Oh, she's doing really well. Here, I could take over. Uh, clinching is my game. I'm pulling her off the ropes. That's really good, staying off of the ropes, especially with her size. Um, but she was doing really well pushing my face around my overturn. And so it kind of made me stagnant and I couldn't keep moving. So that was a good break by the ref, which is unfortunate for me. See how she's pushing my face to the side? I can't, I've overturned on my left. And so I can't actually score um, well. And she's able to score off of it as well. So we're kind of like, I can't take go, over um, the dominance that she has right now. Go, Sumi, go! Go! Forward! Oh, I stayed in better that time and blocked the elbow, um, but the, the effect of seeing that elbow thrown even though it was blocked, I have to have an attack on the other side of it to kind of cement the fact that I stayed in. Again, this is a battle over distance. I'm starting to close in a little better. We're starting to fight closer to my distance, but because I'm popping out all the time, I'm reinforcing her distance. I'm totally mentally lost at this point. I'm shaking my head. Kevin's like, don't worry about it. Don't give up yet. At least you're fighting. He sees a difference between this round and the previous two, which is that I'm staying in closer. From my end in the fight, I don't feel a difference that's positive for me because I'm still afraid of her. I'm still unable to close the distance. The times that we have clinched up, which is my range, I feel like I wasn't in control. So my confidence at this point is not um, motivating me to move to the distance that actually is the best for me. It's because I'm overturning on my grab on the left side, um, which is actually the reason Karahat changed me to southpaw was to kind of correct that. But it's very hard to change habits, especially under the pressure of a fight. You will fall back into your old habits. Kevin's trying to get my confidence up. He's telling me that was, that was a, a good, good round. round. I don't feel that way, so I don't hear him. <laughs> I just totally tune out any of the uh, confidence he's trying to put in. Carhart's telling me to grab her body. Um, I actually did really well. When I beat her in the last fight, there was a part where I did uh, low clinch her and just kept scoring. I think that's probably what cemented my win in that fight. By trying to um, grab her on the neck and overturning the way I am, where she can kind of like push me into a position where I can't score, she outweighs me by probably seven kilos. That's significant. That's like 15, 16 pounds. Um, so me trying to move her in general is hard. Um, but when I don't get the right technical position, it just makes it harder for me and doesn't look good. So you either have to pick complete technical dominance or just make it look better. Like the way she's over me right there, she didn't even have to throw the knee. She's uh, dominating that position. At this point, I'm kind of um, unsure of what to throw first. I know that I need to close, but I'm not teeping the way that Karaha was telling me to do in earlier rounds, which he wants me to teep so that I can close in. But mentally, I've kind of checked out already. Like, I've, I'm too afraid of her. I feel like she's too big. Uh, my eardrum is broken. Like, there are a number of things that are just taking over uh, in my mind that are not how to just be badass and close in, which is really what I need to be doing. But punching trading with her is kind of new. I, I don't punch a lot uh, in the last hundred fights. <laughs> I think I punched a lot more in my earlier fights. Oh, that's not a good position for me. See how my um, left arm, the elbow, is on the side of her head? It needs to be on the front of her shoulder for me to have um, control in that position. Not a good round for me. Um, Tanan Chinook dominated all of our exchanges and was able to stay away from me at the end there. 
that's her game, basically, is she wants to fight for about 30 seconds to a minute You're out of each it's round. Okay, and if I allow her to do that by letting her have her range okay, or not You're dominating when okay. I close in, um, that results okay. in letting it's her okay. not gas out, letting her have uh, the performance that she's so good at creating. Okay. I'm totally giving up at this point, and Kevin Sierra's is letting me know it's game. okay. <laughs> He's trying to get me to not fully quit in the ring, uh, but mentally I'm out. I'm done. You need to get your right arm in, Sylvie. So Karahat is trying to get me to step to get your right on the, on the, the kicks and the knees that I am throwing. Don't, don't quit. It's the fucking Kevin's fifth round. yelling at me don't because quit. I've told him already that I'm pretty much done and it's fifth round. he's freaking out for good reason. You don't let people quit, but I've already quit. I'm already done. Get your right arm in. If you get a lock on her, you can end this fight. So Kevin is saying that if I get a lock on her, I can end this fight, which is true. Um, even though I'm so far behind on the scorecard, as a knee fighter, when you get a super dominant moment, I'm totally capable of knocking people out who are this much bigger than me, uh, who have been dominating most of the fight. It just takes one intensely dominant moment or uh, damage in a late round uh, to turn a fight like this completely around. But with the attitude I have going into the round, it's hard, not fun. possible. Like, you have to believe that you can create that moment. And she's so far ahead, she really doesn't have to do anything other than stay away from me in this round. She doesn't really have to score. She basically just has to continue the narrative she's already created of uh, dominating all the movement and scoring. That's one of the reasons you want to start hard in early rounds, even if they don't matter that much, is you're making an investment in slowing your opponent down in the later rounds. Like, if she has all this energy and all she has to do is stay away from me and look good it's harder to look good when you're tired and i haven't tired her out so i've basically made this round harder for myself because of the way i fought the first and second rounds show your heart it's just something to consider as a forward fighter You'll, uh, you'll hear your own corner get really quiet at the end of fights like this one. <laughs> it's already done when you know that the other fighter just has to dance around for the round. Um, usually people stop yelling and calling out what they want you to do because they know that the fight's already over. I'm making the same mistakes. I'm, I am trying to close in uh, with a little bit more fuck it attitude, but definitely not with heart. They're speeding up the music early. This probably won't be a full two minute round because it's already over. So they just kind of like let it go uh, because the fight's pretty much over. So they they don't uh, they don't always drag it out. It's partially for the dignity of the fighter who's losing sometimes or so that they don't get hurt. Ah, back to the leg kicks a little bit. Oh, that was a nice punch. So I fucking lost my mind uh, in this fight. Like, it was so humiliating, this experience. Um, the fight itself actually is not that bad, but the feeling I had, the place I got in my mind that allowed me to feel so deflated literally in the ring throughout the fight, I <clears throat> was in a really, really bad place after this fight. This is Vicky. She's really sweet. Um, she's a fighter who I met a billion years ago when I was a Lana Muay Thai fighter and she was in my corner and I'm just being an asshole ignoring her because I'm feeling sorry for myself at the end of that fight. <coughs> so this is like two and a half weeks later, maybe three weeks later. So I'm back up at Tape and I have Pinoy in my corner but uh, Karahat didn't come this time so it's just Pinoy in my corner. I'm fighting a girl who I've never fought before, which is unusual at this point in my career. Um, I'm usually fighting people who I have fought before. Um, since December, my weight has really not gone above um, 46 and a half. I'm, I'm basically walking around at 45 and a half to 46 and a half all the time. And my opponent weighed in at 59 uh, going into this fight. So 
I had a 14 kilo disadvantage against this girl who I've never fought before. So I didn't really know what to expect other than that I knew she was Southpaw. Um, but 14 kilos is pretty close to 30 pounds. Um, that is more than I usually deal with going into fights, but it goes to show that uh, the weight disadvantage I have on a regular basis is more than what most people would call the high end of a disadvantage they've ever taken. And the, the big end of my weight disadvantage is crazy. I weigh 100 pounds, so someone who's 30 pounds bigger than me, that's 30% of my body weight bigger. Um, this girl is also from Lampang, which is where Tanan Chinook, my, most, my previous opponent, is from, but they're not from the same gym. Um, she's from a, this, this fighter is from a sports school. Her name is Dara Pet, and I had fought a girl named Pet Dara before, so I wasn't sure whether I'd fought her before, but she didn't seem familiar at all. Uh, I have the same kilos. referee, so when I saw him climb into the ring, I was like, <laughs> fuck, because um, under 46. He, uh, he's been my ref for the past three or four fights, and he, he breaks the clinch pretty fast. Um, when I looked at the, the card where they write uh, what your weight is, the, they do this for gambling, so you weigh in in the back room, but you don't have to cut weight or anything, they just record what you weighed in at. The way that the guy's handwriting was, I thought that, that it was either a 54 written weird or 59, but my eyes are so jacked up because my opponents are bigger than me all the time that I just assumed, I'm like, she can't be 59, she must be 54, and it's just weird handwriting. So I told Kevin, she's 54, which would mean that she's like, I don't know, eight or nine kilos bigger than me. But then when we actually were standing in front of each other in the ring, <laughs> it was like 59 for sure. Um, but I find it very funny that um, I have a terrible ability to judge what someone's size is because everyone I fight is so much bigger than me that it's like warped my ability to tell whether someone's actually my size or not. Um, promoters don't really three, acknowledge how small uh, I am and it's like I don't acknowledge how small I am anymore <laughs> it's pretty funny <laughs> these are my um, Karahat retro vintage replica shorts so runway. they're modeled after the pink shorts that Karahat wore in his fight against Lam Moon uh, where he cut him and Karahat wearing pink is this incredible place, thing because he's so badass and masculine but he's got these like light pink days. shorts um, so because Karahat couldn't be in my corner, I was sure to wear these shorts in the fight uh, to kind of think of him and, and honor him um, in the ring anyway. So again, I really did not know what to expect going into fight. Um, Dara Pet. But I think that after my last two fights being losses that I was very embarrassed about, and my loss against Nanchnok mentally broke me. Um, I told Kevin I wanted to quit. Like, it's hard for me to admit this. I was like, I'm going to stop doing Muay Thai. I was so upset by how that fight felt. And it's just mental. Like, it's when I watch the fight, it's not that bad. It's pretty similar to the ways that I've lost to her before. And... Uh, going in six or seven kilos lighter than a world champion who just retained her title or got her title in Japan like a month before. <laughs> She's in really good shape. Nobody expects you to be able to do that twice. Like nobody expects you to be able to go in and win with that kind of disadvantage twice. But I still was so upset with myself for the performance. It just goes to show how much internal... Uh, struggle or triumph there can be. It just depends on how you feel about it. There you can see our size difference as we're like standing right in front of the camera. Uh, she had been coached on me for sure coming into this fight. Um, she was teeping a lot, which actually was working really well for her in the early round. I'm basically trying to correct the issue I'd had in the Tananchanok fight with range. Uh, so I said again uh, at the beginning, I was talking about how these two fights are really about 
range and distance. I fought the entire Tanantinok fight at Tanantinok's range and then just barely got into mine uh, too late in the fight. So in this fight, my main objective is trying to stay in my fighting range, which is much, much closer. It's in knee and elbow range. Uh, when someone's this much bigger than you, it can be difficult to get in. But once you're in, um, it's difficult for someone who's bigger than you to have any power when you're at that distance. So the entire fight is a struggle over whose range you're fighting at. I'm still overturning on my left side here, but I'm able to kind of pull around and um, correct it better than I was in the Tanantina fight. I need to pull her off the ropes. The ref is actually letting this go more than he normally does. It's possible that he's doing that because our weight disparity is so drastic. I'm actually scoring a little bit from her range, which is unusual for me. And even though I'm scoring, I shouldn't stay there. Score and then come in. I'm blocking a little bit better on those punches. I think that um, the defeat that nice. I had after that last fight and the struggle I was having at my own gym uh, and my wanting to quit, like the... I got hit by a really serious wave, like I got crushed by it and like rolled into the sand <laughs> and that kind of thing. And so because I came out of it and I didn't come out of it like triumphant Sweet and like a chrysalis or anything like that, like I'm still Sweet struggling, me. but Just I think I have a little bit more of a fuck it attitude that's like, the, the uh, you, you don't get let, easy let fights, you like you don't have a time. really hard fight and then get a guarantee that your next fight is going to be letting up Just on the pressure that, that you right felt, cross. you might only have walk pressure right for the rest of your fucking life in all of your fights to go from a 54 kilo world champion to a 59 kilo <laughs> fighter in your next fight. There's no, there's no reason to think I should be getting something other than what you're given. You just have to change how you feel about what you're given. Standing in front of a 59 kilo opponent so right who has 30 right pounds on me at her range, that's my decision. But if I step in, it completely changes the fight. So the, the mental decisions you make about how to perceive something can be as drastic as taking that one step forward that changes who's controlling the space. You can see she's bringing up that front leg for the teeth uh, that was working for her a little bit in round one and so they told her to do it more in round two and it became like her main uh, weapon against me because I come in very straight. Uh, Kevin hates this how I like fall off of those teeps. It makes them look much more effective than they actually are. Um, I got pissed off when he told me to stop stumbling back on them because she's so much bigger uh, that I kind of was literally bouncing off of them. But um, you can make a point to performance-wise stand in better, and it changes the way those teeps look. Look at the difference in our legs. Holy shit. Look at the difference in our size. <laughs> Against the ropes there. My god. So here I'm using my teep better. Uh, that's what Karahat was asking me to do in my last fight. As a um, knee fighter, it's, I think, I don't know why we don't think about it, but because we're always trying to close distance, I think that as Westerners, we think of the teep as a defensive strike all the time, but it's actually not. It can be used as an offensive strike as well. Um, whether you're using it as defense or offense, you're using it to control the range of your opponent. So if she's going backwards and I teep her, it makes it look like I'm making her go backwards. It also allows me to off-balance her a little bit before taking that step in to grab her. Whereas if I just try to step in from like a standstill, it's very easy for her to counter it. I'm bouncing out a lot in this round, but I am coming forward. I'm like insisting on a closer range, even though I have to satellite out from falling off of these um, teeps and, and strikes. But that's one of the things 
uh, as the smaller fighter, you are going to get pushed back. You are going to get pushed out of range. But you just rubber band back in. <coughs> so I need to get her off the ropes. The ref is letting this go because I'm active, which is good. But I scored pretty well at the end of that round. Um, again, just tiring your opponent out early uh, is an investment in the later rounds of the fight. It doesn't matter. Start pulling off the ropes. So Kevin is telling me to get her off the ropes um, because especially if you're fighting someone who's bigger, they can use their weight by just leaning into the ropes. Um, it makes their job of making you look inefficient or kind of snuffing your turns much easier by just leaning into the ropes. But if you take that buffer away, like if you take the chair that they're leaning on out of the room and they're forced to stand uh, in a void, it's much harder for them. It's much better for me. At this point is when I was telling Kevin she's definitely 59. She's not 54. Come on. It's visual. I'm laughing, actually. I find the absurdity of our, di our weight difference so funny in this fight. There was a fight um, pretty close to when I left Lana um, years ago where uh, the girl who showed up was so big um, to fight that they were like, we'll pull someone else in for you because this girl's too big. And they pulled in another fighter who was maybe one kilo less than the one they had, had initially, but pretty much close to this size difference. And when I got in the ring, Sweet the absurdity bait, of not having control over how big that opponent was actually made me fight really, really well. Like like in this example where um, I kind of am not afraid anymore because it's absurd. Whereas I didn't recognize the absurdity of the Tanan Chinook fight. I didn't allow myself to be free by it. Instead, it tensed me up and made me very scared. So here I'm taking away the power of Retit by staying in on it. I'm not falling off of it the way I was when Kevin was complaining. I'm totally capable of doing it earlier. There's nothing different about this. She's getting a little bit more tired, but it's not that big of a difference. It's me standing in and insisting on my range. Off the rope, baby. So here, I am not pulling her off the ropes. I'm just sliding her into the corner. Um, I need to pull her into open water, basically. But Diesel Noy has this whole thing about not bringing your weapons out in rounds one and two. Let your opponent fire all the strikes and you just block and keep coming forward, which tires them out. That's more or less close to what I've been doing in this fight. And you can see her hands are starting to come down. Because she's been tagging me for two rounds, she's starting to get tired. Her kicks are lower. Putting her down, she has to get up. That makes her tired. And because I'm staying in my range, I'm staying on her. She cannot catch her breath. Now I finally got her in a good position, and one good knee right into her solar plexus finishes the fight. That's what Kevin was saying in my Tanantino fight in round five when I'd already given up. He said, you need one good moment. That's the kind of one good moment that can win a fight that you've already been losing the entire time. It's an insistence on range. It's the way you believe in yourself. You don't have to go in like super confident, like I'm a badass. You just have to believe in the freedom of that kind of absurdity. I cut her uh, nose. I maybe broke her nose with an elbow in round two of that fight against the ropes. Uh, we were clinching and I did a Yod Kumpan elbow right across her, uh, the bridge of her nose. And they put a lot of Vaseline on it, but it was bleeding um, quite a bit during the fight and after. So um, either I cut her nose on the bridge or I broke her nose on the bridge, but it was bleeding quite a bit. So that was new for me. My elbows are finally starting to come out. I'm also a little bit frantic after this fight, but not falling apart as a person, <laughs> which is good. It goes to show that wins and losses they make you look better than you are or worse than you are, but they are never an accurate reflection of where you are in your fights. Um, and putting these two fights together uh, and doing a voiceover of them together as a unit goes to show what a huge difference your mentality and your ability to dedicate yourself to that space and that range makes a huge 
difference. Um, if I looked at these just in the order of me having experienced them three weeks apart and kind of remembering in my head that I lost one and I won the other, I wouldn't have seen how important those very tiny differences were for making a huge difference in how each of those fights went. Um, and I think that being able to collapse them together and get kind of a better read by pulling back and looking at them as a single unit um, says a lot about what fighters can learn from their own fights. Um, and if you are falling apart after one, you can do really great after that one on the next one, and it can go vice versa. But the point is to pull them together to be able to see what tiny differences it is that makes those big differences. Because it's actually not so much you, it's the way you're thinking, not really what you're doing. <laughs>